A stock Ender 3 Pro is maxed out at 50mm a second for printing speed, however today I'll be showing you how you can reach speeds up to 250mm a second on an Ender 3 or Ender 3 Pro. This is a Bowden style extruder that comes stock on Ender 3s and Ender 3 Pros and I'll be upgrading this today to a new spider hot end from Creality. As you can see, this is not an all metal hot end because it has a PTFE tubing that goes in and goes down so that it guides your filament down. However, this is not good for printing at high speeds and having a bimetal heat break, which the spider hot end has, will improve print speed uh, significantly. This is the Creality Spider Hot End, and as you can see, it has a bimetal heat break, which pretty much joins two types of metal, steel and copper, to prevent heat creep, which can break your printer. And as you can now see, it's much larger than the Ender 3 stock hot end. The heat break and heat block are both larger, which can allow for higher flow rate and um, Hopefully faster printing speed even though it might be a little heavier than the normal Ender 3 hot end. In my stock Ender 3 hot end I had a hardened steel nozzle but this comes with a copper alloy nozzle which is different so hopefully that enables higher print speeds. Because this hot end is a lot larger, you need to print a new fan duct for it, even if you're using the stock fan duct. I just went ahead and printed a modified version of the Sastana that I found on Thingiverse, link will be in the description, but um, it's larger in the back and allows more airflow to the heat break so that it can print at higher speeds. Installing this was essentially the same process as a normal Sastana fan duct. However, it was a little more difficult because I had a hard time getting this screw in because there was no hole for the hex key to go through like on a normal Sestana. But I eventually got it and it worked out great and I'm still using this fan duct today. Once I finally got that screw lined up, I was able to screw it the rest of the way in. First print off this did not go very well. As you can see, I have just a giant ball of filament, so I stopped the print and started a new one. When I restarted the print, it was going very smoothly. This is only 100 millimeters a second. However, it looked really good for a while until the print started skipping steps and I had to take it off and start over. But I switched the filament because I feel like it was the filament that was doing it and not the printer. This print right here was also 100 millimeters a second. I was just trying to get it dialed in before I went for the full 250 millimeters a second, but it came out pretty nice. Really the only thing that was different was the amount of stringing. There was a lot more. Right here I am printing at 250 millimeters a second now, and I think I got it dialed in and it printed perfectly. So now I printed two perfect benchy boats and they just look phenomenal, but they came out a lot faster than what a normal stock would be able to print at. I was very skeptical at first when I saw this and it claimed to print at 250mm a second. However, I am very surprised and happy that it actually held up to those claims. And right here is the 250mm a second boat. It looks beautiful, just like the ones from the 50mm a second. The green here is 50mm, blue is 100mm a second, and yellow is 250mm a second. They all look pretty similar to be honest and I would say printing at high speeds is great for prototyping and making fast objects that don't need to be perfect so I would say that this is a great upgrade if you need fast prototyping or making a lot of iterations of one model. There is a little bit of ringing on the 100 and 250 millimeters a second models 
However, I'm sure this could be eliminated with some slicer settings, however I didn't spend much time investigating it. Even the smokestacks came out pretty good, and the reason I say this is because smokestacks of these Benji boats usually don't come out good if it's at high printing speeds because you're only printing a small amount and it, all the molten plastic can just droop down. Right here is the filled boat and I'm gonna say it's definitely the filament because I didn't have a problem with any other filaments that I tried. So this doesn't really have to do with the video but I wanted to try this new perspective of really close up uh, filming. I'm gonna permanently attach this uh, endoscope to my uh, print head soon however I didn't couldn't find a model that fit with this uh, fan duct so I will keep you guys updated on what I find out with that, so that'll be a video coming up. I was able to cut printing time from about 1 hour and 20 minutes to 40 minutes, which is really good and will be really useful in the future when I'm making models and need to print something really quick. I experienced skipping on other prints as well, but I later fixed this by some quick setting changes and also changing out the gears to a dual gear extruder. So the real question is, is it worth the $40 I spent on this hot end? And the answer is yes, it is worth it because the higher printing speeds enable faster prototyping and more iterations of one model. So I'd say yes.